Hello, friend, and welcome back to The Jabril Show. I am your host, Jabril Youssef, and we're coming to you live and on time from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My goodness, it's so good to be back here. It's nice to see your face, and I hope you're feeling well. I hope life has been treating you kindly. Goodness knows it's you know, always throwing some haymakers out here at us, you and me both. <sighs> Just doing my best to keep breathing, sidestep those blows, and keep walking toward my destiny. We've got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about playing the game you guessed it, the game of life and all the intricacies woven into it. But before we get to that, I want to tell you a little bit about my week. Like I said, I'm still in Milwaukee. On Friday, I had a chance to stop by an event put on by the uh, America's Black Holocaust Museum, which is based here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And uh, one of the panelists that they had there by the name of Claiborne Benson is the head of Wisconsin's Black Historical Society, Claiborne. And I uh, had a chance to get to know each other a little bit and connect in the past in my life as a journalist here in Milwaukee. And uh, it, was, it was a very interesting time. It was, you know, downtown, uh, east side by the lake, you know, some of the more affluent places in town at a um, an art museum there, a crowd full of white people who it's like, goodness, you haven't heard this before? You know, the presentation was called Ghosts of Segregation Past. If y'all don't know, Milwaukee is the most segregated city in the country. Uh, and And that has come from you know, a lot of, uh, shall we say, racial engineering on the part of uh, governments, both local and federal. Uh, you know, some of the things that we talked about were redlining. Well, I and mean, of course, you know, that involved banks as well. Um, fair housing, which was a was which was a big issue here in Milwaukee in the '60s, and something that there were you know there were more than 200 days of constant marching uh, until the federal fair housing bill was passed. Um, things like, you know, the paving of freeways through black neighborhoods that displace people, that destroy businesses, things like this. And, uh, you know, having these really important conversations. And that was a world that I was really immersed in for a good three to four years and, and you know, still hold those understandings and, uh, and truths dear to my heart. And, and there's a special place in my heart for, you know, the folks who, who I know and, and, and that I have yet to meet in, in other places who are doing the Lord's work, you know, who are doing that hands-on work in our most challenged communities and I'm always I'm always pulling for for us to really come together but but more so than coming together integration you know this this post racism dream of everybody living next to each other and being happy hey great but what's most important to me is economic equality. And until we have that, we're going to continue to see people being taken advantage of. We're going to continue to see gentrification and displacement. And uh, I, I just hope that we can move past having conversations and educating people about this and actually start moving into hey, here are some solutions. This is what we can do about this. Let's work together collaboratively to find our way out of this situation. And in fact, I was able to have a really inspiring and exciting conversation that night with an artist named Phoenix, who's a curator at that museum. 
and and to speak with her about my uh, you know the artists united initiative and uh, what we're doing in that realm in order to connect artists and to create the environment for collaboration in an effort to really kind of flip these dynamics on their head and change the situation from one of you know displacement and poverty and all of this into a place where we can all be proud of. Have you thought about joining our Patreon community? This is a place where I share a bunch of stuff that nobody else gets to see. It's for your eyes only, behind the scenes updates, all my demos and progress toward releasing music, all that stuff that nobody else gets to see. It's all there for you, plus some extra perks, some special releases that only my patrons get to take advantage of. And for the month of December only, it's going to be 16% off if you subscribe for a year. So you make a pledge for a year at whatever level you want and you hit that yearly option, you're going to get 16% off. This is an amazing offer that is not always available and I would encourage you to take advantage of it. I really want you to be here with me moving into 2023. I've got some exciting releases lined up. We're going to be doing some new and innovative things, starting with a release, the release of Glitter on January 12th. I've got a video. It's going to be awesome. And I want you to have a front row seat. So please go and check out our Patreon community at jabrilyousef.com. Click on become a patron and we'd love to see you in there. Have you ever thought that maybe the criminals, the real criminals aren't the petty thieves, but the powerful businessmen and financiers, the ones running our world? Recently, there have been a couple of big scandals you might be, might be, might have been watching the World Cup, but did you know that thousands of migrant workers died constructing those stadiums in Qatar? Did you know that? Did you know that they were living in squalid conditions? That they were essentially lured into a kind of slavery and toil in 120 degree heat where some of them, like I said, lost their lives? Did you hear about the recent Balenciaga scandal where uh, an ad campaign photographs were taken with young children that included BDSM gear on teddy bears? And that one of the photos included in this campaign was of Supreme Court documents regarding a case about child pornography. Now, either we're being taunted or this is just so brazen. It seems so brazen that some people feel like they can do whatever they want. We need to start fighting back. And when I say that, I don't mean with violence, but with awareness, truth, honesty, and love, love and compassion to move our eyeballs other places, to shift our focus to what is real and true. To give credence to that which will last, to that which feeds us, to that which is real. If you've been with us before, you probably know about our fundraiser for our friends at the Kakuma refugee camp. 
We've raised just over $1,700 since the beginning of this year, but the need remains great. Our friends need food. They need medical care. Henry and Children of the Sun still have not been able to get into their new building. And Tazio has set off for Nairobi and is sleeping on the streets. Anything you can give goes a long way toward helping these folks who are just on the edge, on the edge of life and death. Anything helps. What helps the most, honestly, is helping us to spread awareness of their situation. So whether it's sharing this video or taking the link in the description and sharing it with your friends, your family, a church group, a political organization that you're a part of, it really means the world to us and it goes such a long way. Thank you for your help. We appreciate the support. We couldn't do this without you. I don't know about you, but I've been frustrated most of my life at this feeling like it should just come easy. And I've found that the truth is actually the quite opposite. And I don't understand why, because I think a lot of us have this feeling that it shouldn't be as hard as it is. You know, someone said to me recently, we are the only species on earth that pays to exist. Nature is perfect. Yes, sometimes vicious, violent, and unforgiving, but it manages to find order in the chaos. It manages to work itself out. And in the times when someone isn't hungry or being eaten, there's calm, there's peace, tranquility. Us, on the other hand, we've created all these systems and situations and money and uh, institutions and a bureaucracy that makes it, makes it extremely difficult for most of us to not only thrive, but survive. Most of us don't even have the food, the housing, the health care, the education that we need. These are basic things that so few of us truly have full access to. And it's been a frustration of mine, an ongoing frustration of mine, one that I've at times allowed to get me down, to discourage me, to make me play the pity game, be a victim. Woe is me. Why isn't it easier? Why can't I just live my life and be me? And I know I'm not the only one who shares this frustration. Maybe you do. Maybe someone you know does. I recently saw a fellow musician express this feeling of, I have this thing in me. I have this purpose just waiting to get out to bring itself into the world. And yet I have to spend time on this or that in order to bring in the resources that I need to succeed, to stay off the street, to this, to that. It makes it so difficult for us to follow our true purpose and passion and path in life. But I've decided at this point, I need to put that all behind me. If I'm truly going to find my way in this world, in this world, not in the world that I wish existed, I'm going to have to put all that aside 
to accept where I am, who I am, so that I can move toward where I would like to be, who I would like to be. For me, this manifests in two particular areas. I am, as most of you already know, a working artist. I write music, I produce music, I paint, produce a podcast, do a number of other things. Of course, this show, I show up for you here every week. In addition to that, I make deliveries. I'm the one who's dashing your food to you on a given night when you don't feel like leaving the house. And in these two pursuits, I've encountered roadblocks. Or at least the question of, I'm not being as successful as I would like to be, or I would like to be this successful. Being this successful would make it easier for me to live. Being this successful would make it easier for me to do this thing. Being this successful would be helpful in some kind of way. So I've decided this is what I'm doing. Whether I like it or not, at the moment, this is where I am. And if I'm going to be here, if I'm going to be a self-employed delivery driver, a an artist who won't be starving for long, an artist who would like to share my creations, not, not only go through the act of creating them, but actually share them with the world, share them with an audience, share them with people who can appreciate that. I'm going to take the steps to make that a reality. I'm going to take the steps in my delivery job to maximize my return on the time that I'm giving so that I can have more time in other places in my life. So this week I really started taking a deep dive into both of these areas, watching videos on, you know, how to maximize your earnings, uh, how to market music as an independent artist. And I will tell you, it's helping. I find that anything I really immerse myself in, I, I, I learn all the little pieces. I find the, the levers and cranks. Maybe they'll find the shortcuts, the little tips or tricks. And the truth is we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are those who have gone before us and then pass their knowledge down. In a certain kind of way, that's what I'm doing as well. Not only with this show, sharing with you what I learned, sharing with you my emotional knowledge, but with Artists United and sharing the progress of my journey back with folks, other artists who can use that knowledge to further their goals and hopes and dreams. So I'll say to you, based on where you are and where you would like to go, you can do it. If there's been something in your mind that you like to set out on, maybe you're already doing it and you don't, or maybe you tried to do it and you didn't feel like you were that good at it, so you kind of put it down, but you still, it's gnawing at you there, tugging on your heartstring. Maybe you're not as uh, capable in your job as you would like to be and what you're doing now. You can optimize your life. Let's optimize our lives. 
Because I will tell you, I'm not going to put another release out and not know what I'm doing. Yeah, you know, it might not be perfect, but I'm going to have a roadmap. I'm going to build myself a roadmap and I'm going to use the knowledge of other folks to help me build it. I don't have to start from scratch. Isn't that a comforting feeling? At the same time, it does feel like I'm retreading some kind of ground. I'm just looking for an equation that's out there that I just don't know. It feels very powerless. It feels disempowering, discouraging. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you know that feeling of how can they do it? How are they having success? What do they know that I don't? But rather than wallowing in that feeling, going into self-pity and ruminating on everything we don't have, we can say, oh, they, they must know something that I don't. And hey, you know what? I can ask them. Or maybe they have a course that I can take. Or maybe they have some free YouTube videos out there. You can learn anything on YouTube. Trust me, anything you can find on this platform. I guarantee it. So go ahead, start doing your research, start learning the ins and outs of the industry that you're in, the industry that you're moving into. You will not regret it. Now, at the same time, we have to bring this full circle and have this conversation of, I do not believe personally that this is the way it has to be that we have to have these ossified paths, these uh, predetermined success industries. Why, why do I have to do it like someone else did it? And I recently saw a clip of Prince, of the artist formerly known as Prince, who became known as the artist and a symbol. Now, he was someone who did it different. He was someone who did it his way. And even he had to operate within the bounds and the systems and structures that had been previously created to some degree. And somehow he was able to find that balance. He was speaking and he said, you know, they create this game. This is not our game that we are playing, but we are better at it. We are better at it. We have the talent. We are spectacular. Look at yourselves. You are spectacular. And this is why he said, when we succeed, even in their own game, we give thanks to God. And then he said, I just want you to think, I want you to imagine what it would be like if we were all playing our own game. And that's the thought that I want to leave you with today. What if we didn't have to do it like anyone else? What if there wasn't a path already set out for us there? What if we could chart a new and unique path? What if every single one of us could say, I'm going to do the work of interrogating this question, of what it means to be human. I'm going to find out living in my skin and my time and my space, what it means to be me, what it means to 
be alive on this earth in this time, don't you think we'd be a whole lot richer for it? Don't you think we'd be a whole lot more fulfilled? Will you love me after we're young? Will you trust me when it's all said and done? Thank you so much for showing up as always. If you're still here, please drop a like, leave a comment. I want to know what you thought of today's episode. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more. We are here every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Central, and we'd love to see you again. Until next time, you keep living your life to the fullest, please, because that's the only thing they can't take away from you. Stay free, and no matter what, don't ever stop being.